And there's a harsh but fair piece in, um, I think it was Politico this morning, by Nahal Tusi, saying Putin mm-hmm. was playing Biden all along and concluding of that he, Biden thought he could manage Putin. That calculation was dead wrong. And going on to say he repeatedly tried to reason with Putin and Putin cannot be reasoned with, you know, that it kind of recounts effectively the number of things that Joe Biden did to try to try to counter Putin's behavior. They met last June in Geneva. Biden urged Putin to end his aggression toward Ukraine and to stop hacking the United States. In December, Mm -hmm. they had a call and Putin was assembling thousands of troops along the border with Ukraine. Biden pushed him to de-escalate and to return to diplomacy. Earlier this month, Biden warned Putin reinvading Ukraine would diminish Russia's standing, would produce widespread human suffering and on and on it go. None of it worked. Neither did the threat of sanctions, the words of condemnation. This is again from that piece. Emotional appeals on human rights grounds, deployments of U.S. troops to NATO countries in the area, weapons to Ukraine or the relatively united front put forth by the U.S. and its allies. None of it. None of it. Even publicizing significant amounts of intelligence about Putin's plans did not stop him. So where did we go wrong? Like what more should we have been doing? The problem is, is that we keep thinking of Putin and the Biden administration does this. They think of him as a rational actor uh, and, and they think that people like Putin, like Xi Jinping, are worried about what's said at them at Davos, right, or at cocktail parties in Paris. Um, and the, clearly they're not. So this administration tried their strategy at deterrence and that strategy failed. You know, the only thing something like Putin, uh, that someone like Putin, the only thing that they understand is hard power and strength. You know, you had my uh, my last boss, Mike Pompeo, on yesterday and Pompeo constantly said to me and all of us working around him, we have to see the world for how it is, not for how we want it to be. We can't be naive about others' intentions. And so there is this, um, you know, this mentality uh, that people like Putin can be reasoned with it for all the reasons that you just said, stated, uh, and specifically on the sanctions and on the economic side. Uh, I think that we have leaned in too heavy uh, on that as, as an approach. Uh, not that I think we shouldn't be employing sanctions. We should. In fact, what Biden did yesterday was too little, too late. It was a slap on the cheek instead of a knockout punch. Uh, and so that, that's certainly a problem. But sanctions should be a part of, um, a, a, of a whole, uh, if you look at the cake or if you look at the whole piece of, uh, of the pie, for example, the whole pie, sanctions is but one piece of the strategy. Um, and, and when you don't have the credible threat of force uh, to back you up in a negotiation and you're only leaning on sanctions, well, that's not what sanctions are designed for. They're designed to help uh, curb uh, behavior. But again, I think that you can look at all the steps that le- led up to the past year and it actually, you know, I think when history looks at this, it will make a lot of sense. So there's some little things, for example, in the Trump administration, I think it was in the last year um, at Pompeo State Department, we got out of an arms control uh, treaty uh, uh, called INF, you know, simply because we thought that the Russians were evading it and that there was, you know, no point in it being something that Russia was cheating. Uh, Similar for New START, uh, there's somebody named Marshall Billingsley who worked for us at state. He was renegotiating New Star because it was supposed to be re-upped. And we said, you know what, we're not going to just, you know, we're not just going to re-up it. We want to get something for it. We want to know that you guys are actually going to comply and that this is going to be uh, real arms control. Um, and so all the things that, by the way, for the past year that Putin has put on the table, uh, things like not allowing Ukraine and, uh, and NATO, uh, trying to negotiate with us over our security presence uh, in Europe, whether it's our missile defense system or our troops, they tried to negotiate all of that stuff with us. And we said, no, thank you. Like, go fly a kite. Um, and we were certainly if, if we had had another four years, we would not have just re-upped that treaty. Well, the Biden administration comes in. What's the first thing they do? Uh, they, they, renew re, uh, they renew new start the tongue twister, uh, without having, without getting anything from the Russians for it, right? Then you see the attacks on our critical infrastructure um, that I think, you know, there there was definitely not a strong enough response from this administration. And then, of course, you see things like Afghanistan, you know, that matters. It was a huge embarrassment to the world. You also see somebody in Putin who has, listen, I met him with Pompeo and, and meeting him in person felt like meeting pure evil. Um, but I had to meet Lavrov quite a bit with Pompeo. That's the foreign minister. Um, and, you know, listen, Pompeo is as tough as it gets. And so they would definitely try, you know, to get a few inches in meetings. And Pompeo uh, was strong and tough and held the line and stood up for America. And I think that's why you didn't see these sort of incursions uh, on our watch. Uh, Trump and Pompeo made it very clear to them in no uncertain terms 
behind the scenes, what would happen if, if they did this sort of um, activity. Uh, and, and so just to go back, you also have, you know, you have a guy who's done whatever he want, wanted as leader of Russia, you know, for decades now, for over two decades. Um, he can kill whoever he wants to kill. He can do whatever he wants with the oligarchs. Um, he can uh, commit all the war atrocities in Syria. I mean, what what you're starting to see in Ukraine and, and war crimes, I just read about a, a kindergarten uh, this morning, I think that was, you know, potentially uh, bombed. I mean, you're going to see more of this stuff. And by the way, it's just an appetizer for what the Russians are capable of doing. And if anybody's paid attention for what they've been doing for, you know, at least seven years in Syria now. So he's been able to commit all of these war crimes in Syria, all of these human rights atrocities, and everyone, including us, are still buying their oil this morning. Uh, The Russian stock market, unless it's changed in the last hour, it was actually up this morning, which is pretty um, unconscionable to me. You know, what Biden should have done is not just done a slap on the cheek, uh, but he, like I said, the economic sanctions that he should have unveiled should have been a knockout punch where he said, you know what, you are no longer doing business with the West. We're not traveling there. You're not coming here. We're going after you. We're going after the oligarchs. We're going after oil and gas uh, and, and the other economic, uh, uh, pro, uh, you know, like I, I think they have a lot of timber that they do in, in Russia as well. So my point is, is, is all the economic levers should have been turned on and said, you are effectively cut off from the West. But what the Biden administration instead, instead does is they keep doing these little steps, these little half measures. Well, if we, you know, if we only slap you a little bit, maybe it'll actually stop in Ukraine. We keep thinking if we hold back the punch, we being the Biden administration, they keep thinking if we hold back the knockout punch, maybe you'll stop. Yeah. But bullies only understand a knockout punch. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.